We are here. Hello and welcome. First up on the agenda. <laughs> uh, first up on the agenda that I just wrote on this sticky note right now because I didn't want it to be a lie when I said it. First up on the agenda is the Little Mermaid. <laughs> It has to be on the agenda. It, I support it. Is it is, in fact, the only thing on the it's, agenda. It's the agenda. It's, it's the agenda, Little Mermaid agenda. One, The Little Mermaid. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, we both went through it since the last time we recorded. I'm un- Like, I know. There's, it's some, it, like, unlocked something deep inside me. I know. It's the... I, it's a combination of their press and their chemistry just on screen. And also the scene where he has to guess her name. And they do, like, the lip thing. That was the scene. I was not going to see this movie in theaters. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted to, but, like, I'm deeply unsettled by the ocean. And so the thought Mm -hmm. of, like, a realistic under-the-water sequence was, like, ooh. mm -hmm." It Mm -hmm. ended up being fine. It really didn't bug me. There wasn't much ocean. No, and it was, like, the Ursula scene that really – or not even the Ursula scene. It was going to Ursula that was the most unsettling. Like, the eels. But even Mm -hmm. that – like, I was fine. It was not – it wasn't crazy. Anyway, I wasn't going to go see it until people started posting on TikTok. And they were yeah. posting their little edits and somebody posted the scene where she makes mm, – like, I hadn't even guess seen that her name. And I was like immediately texting my best friends to be like, so are we going to go see this movie? Yeah. Remember when I said I didn't want to? I lied. <laughs> lying liar who lies. I'm a lying liar who lies um, because that's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life and I need it. No. And it was. It was. The drive-in was an interesting experience because Fast and the Furious was on the other screen. So you could, like, hear the echo of, like, die, 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 911, like, throughout the entire thing, which was intriguing. Um, mm. But aside from that, I'm bringing headphones next time and just mm. tuning in to my radio and I'm going to have a great time because it was so good. And it was so pretty. And I thought the animation or, like, the CGI was really well done. Yeah. I kept like, – because, you know, there's the people on the internet that hate it because they're going to hate it. Yeah. And every time I end up on a video that's like, yeah, The Little Mermaid, and you look in the comments and somebody's complaining about it because they're going to be there. I keep seeing people that are like, oh, these aren't – like, the mermaids aren't that good. Like, H2O did so the mermaids weird. better. And I'm like, what are you talking – these are fantastic mermaids. I don't – And I saw – because I – was I guess not on the internet as much whenever Beauty and the Beast came out (laughs) but I saw for the first time that they like CGI'd her entire bottom of her dress in that movie like yeah I don't know if I can link it below I probably maybe bookmarked it on Twitter um but Emma Watson wore like a, a short version of the dress so it's like above her ankles and then in every scene with the yellow dress they like CGI the like the bottom of it and then when they're dancing they like cgi all like the twirls and like the poofy like there's no petty live under action it. cinderella would never i know well, like i don't understand you why they when the live that? action cinderella came out and they showed like mm-hmm. the dress mm-hmm. and it was like insane and millions of layers of fabric and i was like i want yeah. it which i mean maybe that's why for beauty and the beast maybe it was like super heavy or hot or something but i don't know why they didn't even give her a petticoat to wear underneath like it was like a very flat very confusing so i saw that and I mean, I didn't even notice that, like, CGI in that movie when I watched it. Um, and then, like, pointing it out, like, in that video, I was like, oh, I can see it here and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm not, like, one to be like, yeah, CGI is, like, terrible. But I thought it was really good. I thought it was good. I was go- I was, I was was worried about the sea creatures. I ended up loving mm-hmm. Sebastian. Sebastian mm-hmm. was so funny and cute. I- Scuttle. I hated that bird. I to be fair, Scuttle's not not annoying in the original. I know, film. but in this one it was worse because I also am not a Lin Manuel Miranda music oh. fan, so it really hit me in a place that I did not desire to be. <laughs> I didn't. I actually didn't mind this guy. I didn't like the Scuttle song when I listened to just the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm, don't care for that. In context, I didn't mind it. I, I, I'm just, I I'm still thinking about it Jonah for the kids song that it is that for is the, the kids like, sure it is a kids but movie. I also I mean personally for me like I'm not like a musical person like oh. I I would never need to go to a new movie that's not like got songs in it like I I'm just not a musical person really I like select ones um and so like feeling it's normally yeah it's normally not my go to like there was what was it 
there was like a show or something that was a musical. I hit play. I heard singing and I exited out so fast. It's just Gallivant, Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Mm, no, because I love both of those shows. No, Justice for Gallivant. Where was season three? Sorry, I'm, was it canceled? Yeah, I didn't make it to season three, no. and that was a. I know you don't like musicals, but this is like a. Well, it's the thing is like I don't not like I can do if I if the music is fine then I'm good. But like it's a comedy musical TV show about a medieval knight who's like retired because the woman he loved, um, a, an evil king captured her and forced her into marriage, and he came to save her on her wedding night, and she chose the riches and power and married the king. Which so is actually a-, a segue into. <laughs> Um, an <laughs> island princess starts a scandal <laughs> by Adriana Herrera. We'll get to that. But um, that, it technically is relevant. So points to you. But keep going. Look at that. And see, I was going to use the Disney <laughs> segue of like the Cinderella aspect of it all. But mm-hmm. um, that works too. Uh, no, that he just has, has been in retirement and this girl needs his help to like save the kingdom. But she's actually going to betray him. But she's amazing. Mm-hmm. Drama. But it's like a comedy. Mm-hmm. Siri. That's it's, actually the, the main song. Yes. It's unnecessarily funny. That's all. I just think everyone does should it watch end it. on a cliffhanger? Or like no, does it end like where you no, could just like watch it and it watch. wraps up because they I think they knew it was they probably knew, gonna yeah. get cancelled. There was like one in the second season, the the king is actually kind of a funny character who kind of redeems himself. Mm-hmm. So by the second season, he's a protagonist essentially, and he like <laughs> adopts some kind of lizard and apparently whoever i think it was like whoever sold it to him told him it was a baby dragon Mm. and the entire season you're like that is a lizard like he has been bamboozled hoodwinked yeah he's been hoodwinked but then like at the end of season two you find he like is a dragon now and so it's like da 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 like that's their one like if they needed to pick it up Mm. for another season oh they had a dragon um they had a dragon but well, look how dragons end a Game of Thrones. I didn't watch fire, Game of Thrones. Fire everywhere. I watched the first season, and then I watched, I think, the last season. Like, I have no attachment to Game of Thrones at all. I'd have no interest in the middle bits. Sure, sure. Just with all that As jazz. opposed to The Little Mermaid, where the middle bits were arguably <sighs> the best part. So good. I could... There, them, I mean, I liked the end of the sea I just, sequences, but... Oh no! I I I just need more of them just being cute, yeah. walking around, yeah. like mm-hmm. it, it, just a little facial expressions. And I want a little spin-off series of their married life now, off exploring yeah. things. I just don't know how you can watch that movie and think Hallie wasn't the right answer. Oh, well, she's so mad. Like her, f- even I mean, she's a brilliant singer. But I think even better was her, like, facial expressions. Like, I think she was just – because so much of the movie is just that. No voice. And so I I thought she acted so well with her face. I think the most unrealistic part of the movie to me, actually, is Eric being able to sit in that boat and look into her <laughs> enormous, beautiful eyes – Oh, he was down. Not though. kiss her. Oh, he was so. Listen, the amount of times I've rewatched the kiss the girl, just like from yeah. people having recorded it, and he's like, and then she looks away. He's so shy. Oh, he's so baby girl. No one talked to me. Like <sighs> that man is so down bad. There's the part where she gets up and like kind of falls on him, and mm-hmm. he like visibly gulps, and I'm like, get out. Enough. Yeah, I've had enough. Um, I need him biblically. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do I with that. I don't think you understand. I, I need that's him in a new way. Ca- that's a new catchphrase. I need him I in need a way that is biblical. concerning to feminism. Like. <laughs> oh, I mean, dare you I, go on AO3? <laughs> <laughs> Not AO3. Mm. I know. His that dimples man. are so fascinating. Because one, one is always there. And then one randomly appears. And I'm like, hello, soldier. His dimples actually need a chiropractor. For <laughs> They're carry- crazy. I'm just kidding. I can't even say that they carried the movie because Hallie carried the yeah. movie. But uh, they carried something. They carried, they carried my the weight libido. of my affections. 
<laughs> all weird. right, two different directions. <laughs> two different directions. That's all right. <laughs> we got the spirit. <laughs> Go team. I literally mm. can't stop thinking about him. I know. My, it. It's bad. It's bad out here. Slash the movie in general. Mm-hmm. I feel like an eight-year-old again. Yeah. But like with adult was... money. With adult money. That's so true. Like, have you seen Pandora has a, um, like a charm mm, necklace? The seashell. The, yeah. Uh, seashell. The, mm-hmm. like, Vanessa seashell. And I was like, yeah. I have my own money now. Dude. I, an adult, could, could buy that. It? No. I really thought about it, though. How much is it? I have no idea. It's from Think Pandora. about it again. <laughs> Think about it again. <laughs> Fair point. I was like shopping for this trip I'm going on, and yeah. I went to there was an uh, like a shopping center, and there was an Ulta mm-hmm. right by where I was. And I had just seen on the internet one mm-hmm. Ulta had like a whole bunch of Little Mermaid makeup and like a big shell. Yeah, full of the stuff, and it was like twenty bucks or something. And I was like, "Do I need it? No, but do I need it? Yes." Reader, so I needed it. I went to Ulta; they didn't have it. All they had oh. was, like, the sunscreen or something, which I'm allergic to. So mm. I was like, oh. rip. It's fine. I bought other things that I didn't need but needed, but they didn't have the Little Mermaid, but it's fine. I'm just a little bit sad about it. It's fine. Everything is fine. I bought so many beads because I was already, when you texted about the friendship bracelets, like, I already was already, like, going through all my stuff. And then I wanted more. So I bought more. Good. Now I've just been storing them all day. Speaking of beads, um... Man, we are like 15 minutes into this and yeah. not even close to the topic. Speaking of beads, we, we are got going there once. Shh. <laughs> we'll come we'll circle back. <laughs> we'll circle back to whatever that tie-in was. It was Dang. I I got it in my noggin. We're good. Okay, shout out to We're your good. noggin. Steel <laughs> trap. <laughs> um <laughs> Speaking of beads, we will both be at Steamy Lit Con mm-hmm. in August. So, if you will be there, you, the listener, not you, Hannah, I know you'll be there. We're sharing a room. <laughs> we sure are. Uh, first of all, get ready for a live episode. That'll be interesting oh, to boy. figure out how to record. And oh, second yeah. of all, um, a TikTok mutual of mine who I, we can link her in the description. Her uh, username is Satreya, I believe is how you say her name, Reads. Um, and she posted and said that she was going to stimulate and that she was going to be bringing friendship bracelets to hand out. And I was like, mm-hmm. <gasps> I want to bring new friendship era bracelets. Was born. Um, yeah. So I I think that she's on to something genius. And if you're coming to stimulate, you should also bring friendship bracelets. And it'll be like the era's tour, but books. Mm-hmm. So, yes, we will be there. Come find us. Come get a yes. friendship bracelet. I'm very get excited. Elizabeth Everett is going to be there. We're going to get mm-hmm. drinks with her. I'm so ready for that experience. <laughs> like, I'm very excited. <sighs> the hotel has a pool. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm ready. It's going to be a good time. Um, there it are so is. many authors going. I know. I am excited. Also, well. I had to call the hotel um, when we booked. And that guy had a really hot voice. So oh. shout out to that like hot hotel guy. Hotel romance at the yeah. Steamy Lit Con. And he had to say Steamy Lit Con to me. So that was a fun time for everyone. I wonder what that's like for them. Because <laughs> he was like, are you with this? I was like, yeah. Yeah, I am. I need to like make sure the room. People. Yeah. So. Mm. Mm-mm. Anywho. stuff. Well, all I have on my agenda is The Little Mermaid, so (laughs) we covered that, I think, sufficiently. Hallie is a real-life mermaid angel princess. She is. Her energy is just the purest, loveliest thing. And then I start thinking about the way that they made like developed Eric's character and gave him the study with like yeah like, the study, study no actually it mirrors no. her grotto no. yeah I know like, all they're both hoarders up to the ho- I was raised Not for the this hoarder <laughs> like the 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 mirroring of their like collections was it, we, an intense emotional experience for me it was a lot of things. Least. And, and then, then he I was saw... just, and then he was like, no, don't share the rock. And then she was like, ha look at this. And then oh. he was like, Duh. and she oh my just God. could blow the horn. And then he, Ugh. okay, I'm back. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to be rewatching, I mean, not rewatching, watching The Little Women where he's Lori just mm-hmm. 
because I know he has a terrible American accent. Does I he? know that I'm uh, the clip that I saw. It wasn't great. Am <laughs> I gonna actually, watch the whole thing anyway? Who's though? to say? Because um, I'm in the the Fate of Maids Discord, and there's like an audiobooks like chat thing about in it. And people were, like, hating on Mary Jane Wells' American accent. And I was like, but oh. listen, it does something so feral to me. Probably because it's Matthew Swift, but also Caleb. The re- Like, I think I gave Bombshell four stars when I first read it. I listened to that audiobook, started ovulating, gave it five stars. <laughs> like, the accent she does for Caleb, I don't know what she put in it. Oh. Okay. We are <laughs> so far into this episode. Whoops. Whoopsie Look, doopsie. we had to talk about Hallie and Jonah. I know. It was necessary for it our well-being was. because it takes up about 80% of my brain space. Mm-hmm. But I suppose. We should talk about what we came here to talk. I just realized the flowers that are on the spine. I respect that. Show it. There are, um, like, iris-type oh. flowers on the spine of the book. Oh, yeah very uh what's the word i'm looking for what's the uh they look like a vagina yeah what's i know phallic it suggest is there a i have to assume that lay lay volfic i don't know what? I'm getting into uncharted waters here, and I don't like it. Well, you know what, Manuela was in uncharted waters. Oh pretty yeah, pretty frequently. So she she wanted to be in those waters. She went for a swim. I, uh, um, <laughs> yes. What happens if I Google? Ah, uh, nothing good. But we're here for it. Alex? Oh. Yonic. Yonic. Y o n i c. Taken from the Sanskrit word for vagina. Where does phallic come from? Is that also Sanskrit? Uh, no, phallus is. Oh, you. Mm. <laughs> no, uh, sorry. Yonic is the equivalent of phallic. Weird. But that just makes me think of yawning. Yonic. Oh, vulvate. Having Ooh. the form or appearance of the vulva. So. No, no. Yonic. Or vulvate, <laughs> I guess. I'm really. It, look, it looks like there's multiple. It was the yonic of times that was the vulvate of times. This is a fascinating etymological lesson I'm getting from Google. <laughs> you know who else got lessons? Uh, Manuela. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, really intrigued by this, actually. Okay, so I think Yonic is correct. Yonic. The flowers on the spine are very Yonic. Yonic, that just is not... Maybe I'm mispronouncing it. Maybe it's Yonic. Ooh, like, Yonic? <laughs> mm, that's worse. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but I feel, no. I, I feel do like... They have a, do they have a little play thingy? Uh, probably. Let me see. Let me Google... Yonic. Yonic. Um, I apologize to everyone for butchering <laughs> that word repeatedly. Sorry to your eardrums. Yonic. This this says yonic. Yonic. Huh. Yonic. Yonic. Oh man, I really butchered that guys. I'm sorry. The vibes were yonic up in there. The vibes were so yonic <laughs> in all of Manuela's paintings. Uh-huh. Um very and Cora was like, ah, that's subtle. <laughs> this person's just straight up coming out of a flower. Yeah. Super subtle. Coming Super out cash. of the flower and I'm feeling. We need to get on topic. Today we're yeah. talking about an island prince <laughs> starts a scandal. Welcome to Romance Your TV on 37 minutes in. It's been a long time coming. 37 minutes exactly. Um, yeah. I, I, I always love when I can edit things out and then we mention the time in the episode and then if people are like, why is this saying 25 minutes when they said it was like 35 minutes? It's fine. Because I succeeded in my goal. Um, <laughs> I corralled us because a little bit. Because we some real nonsense mm-hmm. for very Sabrina long Sabrina Carpenter wishes she could be us. What a great song. 
We don't need to go down that rabbit hole. No, but it's a great please song. God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah, an island princess starts a scandal is the second book in the Lost Leonas series by Adriana Herrera. Um, it's like her first. Is it her first like historical romance like series? Because she did like a few of the novellas and the duke i'd like to f and yeah to my knowledge these are the first full length traditional published ones from her yeah um we both really enjoyed book one um a creeping heiress in paris and then i really enjoyed the audiobook i think both times that i read so i read that one physically first and then did the audiobook same thing with this the audiobook the narrator is just she's so fantastic it like upped it because so I think I gave this one four stars in my first read because the format formatting of the arc was so terrible that I think like it slowed me down so much that the pacing felt off. But when I reread it via audio, I was like, oh my God, no, it's perfect. And so I gave it five stars. So I think the audio, I, like these are perfectly suited for that um, audiobook if you're a fan of audiobooks because man, is it good. Hmm. Dang, now that we get to the actual topic, we're like nothing to say. Nothing. Um, um I mean, the Adriana Herrera, she has a novella called uh The Duke Makes Me Feel, which she like first it was in, I think, the first uh Duke I'd like to F anthology. And now it's just, I think, on KU or whatever. Um, you can buy it. And it took you to Paris for the first time. So you could like I saw that and I that was like a five star novella. It's great. Um I'm like, thinking, yeah, so good. Um, so then when I read that, uh, I think I like commented on one of her posts about it. And then she was like, oh, we're co- coming out with like more. We're going back to the World Fair in Paris for um, book one. And then obviously we're back in Paris for book two. The other uh, anthology, the novella she did for that is in Paris too, Monsieur X. Mm-hmm. I liked mm-hmm. that one. And then the one in the villain one was not, it was, I. it was in the, was it maybe, they were pirates. That was a. Like, that was my I favorite know, I didn't, anthology. I hadn't read that. It was real good. Um, yeah, I do love the setting. I mm-hmm. feel like I talk about this literally every time I talk about Adriana Herrera's historicals. They're just so well researched. Mm-hmm. Her author's notes are fascinating too. I and I have a lot of feelings that could very quickly turn into a soapbox about the fact that people of color who are writing characters of color in historical romance are like the ones who are most likely to have the most yeah. well researched books and like accurate books yeah because <laughs> like, they're constantly preemptively uh-huh. fighting off that this isn't historically accurate well that's yeah because like when i read emily howard's queen bee like she had to put in her author's note like hey this actually isn't historically inaccurate but i know people are going to say that it is so like here's all of this information <laughs> and sources mm-hmm. And, I mean, it was a very fascinating just author's note, but, like, she had to preemptively say this actually, like, it wasn't all white. But, no, I just think, um, I thought this one, even the history, was more interesting to me than book one. Um, I felt the history more in this. I remember when book one came out, a lot of the criticism it was getting, or at least the criticism I heard of it was, like, about how much it felt like a history mm-hmm. lesson at times, which was not an experience I had reading that book. At no point was I like, "Ugh, why are we getting all this history? Yeah. Like, I don't really know where that, the foundation for that critique came from. Like, I felt like it was mixed in very well. Um, mm-hmm. I think Beverly Jenkins does more just like kind of lecture. And that's not a criticism yeah. for me, but I think she does more just like info dump mm-hmm. than a Caribbean, a Caribbean heiress in Paris did. Um, this one, and it, again, not info dumpy at all. It was all worked into the plot. Um, really yeah, well, I think this I one really incorporated in it into just the characters' motivations and what was going on in the book. Yeah. Um, and just like the, um, you know, sapphic scene for like the different yeah. – um, what would they be? They're not like ex- expats, maybe, or whoever. Like, they're just a bunch of people like going mm-hmm. over to Paris, um, for like the art scene. Yeah. Well, I think I think she talks about that in the author's in note, the too, author's the way note, that yeah. the Sapphic community was so ingrained with like the mm-hmm. artistic community, which mm-hmm. and because um, 
it wasn't illegal for women to right, have sex. Right, so they could be more open. Like it was for the men, so mm-hmm. it was a little bit more um, free. It still obviously had right all of that, but but um, you weren't gonna get like yeah imprisoned or hanged. Exactly. You could also shoot the man you want to marry in the arm in a red dress, walk out, and also not get arrested. Gotta love Paris. Gonna do it for you. <laughs> love the French. Um, unless the French are the villains. In which case, <laughs> fuck Napoleon. I read one Those book the where he was the ones. father of one of the, like, the heroine. He was the father of the heroine. Napoleon? Was, yeah, bro. It was weird. It felt like they wanted me to like Napoleon. And I was like, why is this man in this book as a character? I did not want it. I did not ask for it. It was weird. I'm shaking to my core. <laughs> it was, yeah, no, it was a time to be alive um well there's no call to like napoleon in this no. book no no thank god there is a lot of art and sex <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of feelings there's a lot of feelings there's a lot of family drama yeah what did um i took a note i was like doing like favorite quotes what was it um oh i took no notes I saw the Aurora quote about the the roast, <laughs> which was relatable of her. The the quote that I posted on my story yesterday was, in fact, um, in reference to Aurora. The woman could be led down to the depths of hell with a promise of a juicy roast. And then you cut to her, like, having the time of her life in that party, just, like, chowing down on some chicken. <laughs> I love her. I am so excited for that book. She hates yeah. that man so much. And he's just like, why do you hate me? Mm. And I want to know. I want to know. There it is. Like, <laughs> like, I felt it in my bones, that line. But another one I felt was a pretty girl with familiar complications. Which then, there's like the whole thing... Um, on Twitter going, like, behind every hot girl is a deep history with X and X. Mine was behind every pretty girl. There's a deep history with familial complications. Oh. And I Manuela. think that is Manuela. And I think to really start, I guess, the conversation that we've taken so long to get to, the most fascinating part about this book to me was how they framed Manuela's, like, want of comfort and, like, how – it was approached that she was okay marrying this guy because she did like nice things and she liked a certain level of comfort. Mm -hmm. Obviously throughout the book that progresses into, I don't have to sacrifice my life for my parents sins and all of that. Um, But I really loved that she was able to just like appreciate the things that marrying him would do for her um, rather than it being like a total self-sacrifice, which it was a self-sacrifice, but I really liked how it was framed because that's a trope that I'm not necessarily um, – I'm just not a fan of. Um, but I think it flipped it a little bit here because it she viewed it as a sacrifice, but she also viewed it as something that she wanted at a certain point in her life because it was able to keep some of the status quo, um, which then like led later in the book when Cora – um was wanting to have the gentleman's club rather than a club for women and she was like um you know no one's gonna care about a club for women but these men like i would have power over them and then there was a line in the book how they were both the same that she was striving to be in a world um that didn't want her or respect her and same thing with manuelo and she was wanting to be um married to that guy but again she wasn't like wanting to be but I just thought it was really fascinating because when I, like, read the premise and then started reading the book, I was like, ooh, am I going to like that? And then I was just like, honestly, same. I would want to wear pretty dresses and just spend all of this money in Paris. I mean, that's fair. I think she mm-hmm. also says pretty early on, like, she was essentially assuming, like, I can't be married yes. to another woman. So that was like, also I might a hard as well. That really hit the emotional strings once she saw – um Cora's friends Mm -hmm. living together like out in Paris and she's like oh now that's like a path that my life can take um so I was also very happy with the third act breakup of it all um it I just really like it was like hurt and it was sad but I was also like that really helped them grow for me um because 
Manuela was there. You know, she was like, I don't need the money. I don't need this. I want, you know, a life where I can just be myself. Um, and then obviously Cora just attacks that man. Like she my does. Queen. I, I that we respect that we gave Cora yeah. like the grovel of mm-hmm. traditionally the historical romance hero, where like mm-hmm. which was jarring to read a woman doing what I would not blink an eye at if a hero in a book mm-hmm. was like not bathing and not eating and mm-hmm. like being really grumpy to the side. I'd be like, good for him. It's what he deserves. Go grovel mm-hmm. and get this woman back. But it was like very interesting to see that put onto a female character. Mm-hmm. I and have her it. like not yeah. bathing and like not eating and everybody's like, pull yourself together. Like I love, I love her so much. I mean, the way I was giggling like straight up when she just got on that man's back and just started ripping his hair out like as one of my top five favorite scenes in a book because she really was like I'm not just gonna speak now I'm gonna speak violence and just attacked him and I was so happy I hate him so much and I was so happy that she just attacked him violence like, uh, it made my life so much better after reading it. And it's it stuck with me since the first time I read it. I mean, facts. My I just think about it. gripe randomly. related to not that scene, but the scenes prior. <laughs> it's not really a gripe. I gave this book five yeah. stars. I don't have that yeah. much to complain about. But there's the scene. I If you haven't guessed it yet, we're talking spoilers. There's the scene. <laughs> I If you've made it this far, I hope you're prepared. Um, Jesus, I'm looking at the timestamp. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> um, the scene where Manuela is trying to explain to her parents she doesn't want to marry this guy, mm-hmm. and Cora shows up and is like, "Everybody, shut the fuck up! I'm gonna pay you to let yeah. her not marry him." And she is so hurt by it. Uh-huh. I meanwhile was over here like, I mean, it's- I get it. It sucks. She doesn't want to mm-hmm. be with you. Sure. I don't know why we're going back on it though, and being like, "I'm gonna marry mm-hmm. him anyway." You just had got an out. I know. You got an out. You can still sell your land or whatever. Like, I don't. Yeah. I mean, that. I said it in our Flowers from the Storm episode. I am totally okay being a coward and taking the easy way out. And if I had a hot, beautiful woman paying off a sleazebag scoundrel, like, I would accept it. I think that is where, and I mean, I did listen to this audiobook sped up because I was trying to get it done by we, the time we could record this episode. So I will admit, I think there are some scenes that I didn't fully absorb. I, I would, no, I would definitely, like, when you reread it, I think it'll be even better because, again, I'm like, sure. I picked up so much more on the reread. I'm sure. I, I feel mm-hmm. like I just missed at some point where I was like, I don't understand why she would be like i'm gonna do it on my own terms like and not take them and like go through with Mm -hmm. marrying him anyway like i was like girl just go do your like art collective thing why are you making this stand i still don't even think she had fully registered that she could live a life like successfully Mm. you know like i i don't think i think i think it took i think it took a long time for her to be like actually i can rewire that part of my thinking where i don't have to like be a part like i think she was able to see more of like the relationships like the sapphic relationships throughout um and i think there was like a scene towards the end where she saw where she was talking with the two friends who had come out um the one i can't remember their names it was like violet yeah that was not violet (laughs) no rip me um but they they were talking about how one of them (laughs) How one of them had to um, basically just, like, come out to her parents and was um, written off. What's the word? Disinherited? Yes. Disinherited. Uninherited? Well, disinherited is right. There's, like, the... Uh, It's a word. Disowned? Disowned. That's the one. Disowned. So I think... And she was just like, you know, I would much rather um, be free. Like, this is freedom for me rather than you know money and riches and all of that um so like i definitely i mean i'm always when there's one character who is significantly wealthier than the other 
and the other one is like, I don't want you spending money on me. Um, that one that wasn't really in this book because she was happy to, um, be spoiled, which was also nice. Um, there was like a sexy like a Cora would like bought her a dress and then it had like pockets and then she was able to like get her off through the pockets in the dress. Yeah, it's like goodbye sexy dress hello sex dress like i don't know what was happening like i did not clock that on the first read through <laughs> and then i had to like i don't know how you didn't <laughs> I, I was like oh well i don't think i like really fully just was like oh the dress is still fully there but like the dress is like it was made i was like wow that's can you imagine you're the seamstress <laughs> and this woman is like i have an order for you well they were like, have fully going at it and the seamstress <laughs> was just there <laughs> It was fun. Um, what was it? The, 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 um, the, the, um, what were we talking? Where? Why? Well, we, we were talking about just how pockets. <laughs> not a cop pocket. Was, yeah, just sex like, pockets. Yeah. Um, what new pockets will we discover on <laughs> Romance Your TBR today? Womb pockets. Ah, <laughs> the pockets <laughs> that open up behind your cervix when a man with a I think it's ten and a half inch penis goes all the way. Listen, so much. I can't wait for you to someday read Passion. Yeah, that's gonna be a day to remember. It's the popping for me. <laughs> it, yeah, it's the popping. It's the popping. The popping wow. preceding cervix breaching slash some kind of pocket of flesh, and that's a quote opening up. That was a lot of peas. That was a lot lot in a sentence. Yeah. (laughs) No. Uh, Uh, But we we were talking about how um, Cora and Manuela money spending money. Well, I have a note. Just casually buying her Cartier. (laughs) Sure, as you do. Yeah. Like truly. Where is my Duchess? Yeah. Like actually. What else? Um. The, there was the quote, I'm done measuring myself with a ruler that was meant to strike me down. I think that was like a huge part of the ending where they were both reckoning with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like I really appreciated how Manuela like told off her parents. And I, again, she was still going to go through with the marriage. So like I thought it was fun how she like it was down to the wire because it just had that drama of Cora coming in and beating the shit out of that man. You know, I think it's funny that you really love this book and there's another book that has a comparable thing that you hated. What was it? Portrait of a Scotsman has a very similar mm. ending in that this one also, they separate. Yeah, I think I liked the – I think th- to me, the reasoning here made a lot more sense than in Portrait of a Scotsman. But also, I just didn't like Hattie. And I love <laughs> I love both of these characters. I was just – I just remember you being that like, makes really sense, mad about though. the ending. But this one is ve- – like, she quite literally goes off and does a very mm-hmm. similar thing where she, like, goes and lives her own life and proves that she can live alone and, like, mm-hmm. teaches. She literally goes and becomes a teacher. Mm-hmm. And then Cora kicks yeah. open a door and is like, what's up? <laughs> That's how it happened. I'm still sexy. <laughs> what's up? I'm still, still sexy. really into you. That's a direct quote. Yeah. And you. Not from Paramore. It's I just from this book. Um, yeah. Um, I guess this one, I think the pacing, well, it just didn't really seem random to me. Like, in Portrait of a Scotsman, I thought we were done. And then she still went and did that. But this, to me, it made sense just how it was all laid out. Like, you knew that even after the wedding, it probably wasn't. That wasn't going to be enough because – she still didn't fully, like, understand why Manuela um, was doing the things she was doing and, like, needed that space. Um, And so then I I just, again, loved her getting to just have that, like, terribly, like, down, sad reckoning and, like, the people in her life telling her, like, that this is your fault. Like, you know. Well, because it was, like, again, like, it was, like, after that when her – the two friends that again I'm blanking on their names like came over to talk to Manuela and they were like we're still your friends too and then that was just cute. Which um, brings me to actually a point that I was gonna make and I keep forgetting it and then remembering it while you're in the middle of saying things and then I'm like remember remember and then I forget again. 
I remembered though. Something so interesting to me. Specifically because this is we've now had a like heterosexual romance in the first book. Mm-hmm. MF. And now we have a sapphic one in the second book that are by the same author. Mm-hmm. Um, something that I have noticed uh, in contemporary also. I was going to say just in historical, but it's true in contemporary in my experience. Is that queer romance novels focus much more on community building. Like mm-hmm. part of the HEA in almost every queer romance I've ever read is a Mm-hmm. community around the main couple as opposed which is like also sometimes true in straight romance but like well, yeah. it isn't required or to, it's not as it's heavy more of, of a, a trope focus. yeah it's more of a trope i would say it, it's and, like, not straight. as like critical to the hea mm-hmm. i feel like for a straight romance that standard hea is gonna mm-hmm. be like the baby log or the the creation of the mm-hmm. nuclear family whatever it is whereas in queer romance it's almost required that you have a community mm-hmm. as part of the HEA. Like it just doesn't feel complete without one. And so I think it's so interesting because Lucilana and Evan, I mean, not that they're alone. They have like their family, obviously mm-hmm. they still have their friends, but I feel like they didn't like really create a community. They almost like they took themselves no. out of the community. They yeah. went from Paris to Scotland to go like mm-hmm. run their business and have their little honeymoon situation. Mm-hmm. Whereas, now in the sapphic romance, we we needed that sapphic community. Like that was part of the plot and also required mm-hmm. for the AGA is for Freddie and Cassandra to come and be like, we're still your friend. Like welcome mm-hmm. like her into that have sapphic us. community. Yeah. I don't have anything else really compelling to say. I just, every time I read a, a queer romance, I, mm-hmm. I like fixate on the community because you have to have it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm wondering if that's because like since it's technically not fully accepted within society like if they need to show you that these people have like like people to talk to and like about Mm -hmm. their love and their romance whereas in like straight romance I feel like if it's just the two of them I don't I don't know I don't really know what I'm thinking like (sighs) Like they're already part of a larger community, yeah. Because there's you know, like they don't separating them. It they still don't feel like they're so separated. Where I f- if I feel like if you just have two like queer characters just in a society that hates them, or like in a, like a community like where they don't have a community like that, you just feel sad, right? You know, I I mean like, I feel like it's just, like mm-hmm. to be happy, you need a community. Yeah. Yeah, and just to show, I think, just those relationships and, like, them getting to be loved by so many people and sure. accepted. Because um, a lot of, like, I think it just also adds just a just a wholesome, like, loving vibe to it. Yeah. Well, like, I also just think vibe to it. the queer community is really mm-hmm. strong. And so it exactly, probably yeah. naturally bleeds into. Because mm-hmm. like, the friendships are always queer author so... Is kind of right. Mm-hmm. a community into that mm-hmm. well but and especially like Lucilana ha- I mean the the Leonas they all have each other already at the mm-hmm. start of this but they are having to branch out because right you know because like Lucilana is going to Scotland uh Manuela is staying in Paris and then wherever <laughs> Aurora, yeah, Aurora ends up is doing but I like you start with this community and Lucilana doesn't really gain much beyond beyond like Mm -hmm. Evan and that aspect of her community whereas for Manuela like these friends were great friends and she says Mm -hmm. multiple times like they don't get her but they support her like that energy but she needed a community that got her maybe it was because Luzalana was also like basically raising her sister so she needed Mm. it just to be revolving around her Mm -hmm. and Evan where she doesn't have to be a maternal figure where she can just like live for herself right um and like be selfish a little bit whereas i think manuela wanted something more than her terrible family yeah um because obviously she was never understood and she was ha- she, so for context if you haven't read it uh, um if you haven't read it you're but you're real confused right now basically I have feel, feel you. yeah honestly just kidding we haven't talked about the plot almost <laughs> at all no. But um, in the past, she had – I think she was only kissing one of the daughters of, like, a 
business investor of her father's and um it like it was like revealed and it like blew up she got in, caught yeah it was a caught it like the, blew up the, in the investor face. pulled out and then um she so then her her parents were just like very poor fiscally like they were just not making good fiscal decisions <laughs> and morally and so um they needed her to get married to this guy felix i think yep to like replenish their coffers and stuff but then she also has this set of land um in was it venezuela yes where they were making the was it the panama canal uh I don't know if that's where the – It was like something – geography question. Uh, I know. In the, the Panama Canal got halted, and so yeah. they were working on the trans-South American or trans uh, – mm-hmm. I don't know. There was, I think there's a very American, fast, There's an uh, interesting bit in the author's note about it. Yeah. Um. So she has this land that was given to her by her grandmother in Venezuela that Cora needs to purchase for a – um. Can, was it the canal or was it a railroad? No, no, no it was the railroad. railroad. The canal so got needs, halted. Yeah, gotcha. So then they need to put the railroad where her land is. The land is sentimental. So then she enters into a, um, I'm going to be in Paris for six weeks. Show me all the sapphic hangouts and pleasure. And then I will sell you my land. Um, and it was a whole thing. Um, yeah. I can show you the Sapphic Underground in Paris, 1889. <laughs> okay, Aladdin. All the Disney. <laughs> Disney, don't come for us. No, come for us. <laughs> don't sue us, please. Just send us Little Mermaid merch. You know, sponsor us, actually. Um. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I also love, I mean, Cora is just like hot hot i'm just thinking about her shooting the so in her backstory (laughs) Mm. um she was being forced to marry this guy that her father wanted and she just shot that man in the leg as you do and then went and married a very nice man who was heartbroken and was like i will never love you romantically but we can be friends and i'll support you and you can run the business of the dukedom and so she was married. I think it was like five. How many? Oh, well, I don't remember. Years? I don't know. Um, but then she had a uh, the son. So he he had a son already. So he didn't need like an heir or anything. Um, so like they never. It was never a sexual relationship. It was just like a very fulfilling. Like they were best friends, and so it was like very sad. Um, when he died, and she went into a depression and ended up falling in love with the scammer. And after that. She hate it when that happens. <laughs> she tanked um a lot of her investments and responsibilities and stuff. And so she's scared to fall in love. Um, because it could lead to that again, which she was nearly ruined. Um, because her uh stepson is the Duke. And he's nice and he's good. And I love when um there are positive familiar relationships in books, um, especially historical romance. Like I just love a supportive um you know sibling or child and just it was just really wholesome when he was like calling her mom and ugh, our mother i guess mom doesn't really make sense in the context but the ma. <laughs> um yeah i just love her i mean she just shot that man and she beat <laughs> another man up at his wedding i mean there's just something so satisfying about feminine rage <laughs> I mean, and I was satisfied. I really was. Cue the Hamilton soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I just... I have nothing really to add. I just think Cora's no. hot. She showed up in those pants and I was like, that's hot. <laughs> she showed up in those pants. She did. Another quote that I have, the girls are lusty and slightly addled. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> lusty and slightly adult Us, every time we get on um, here to record <laughs> me uh, watching so the little mermaid for the <laughs> hundredth time lusty and slightly adult um supremely annoyed and also highly aroused which was frankly rude that was another favorite quote of Cor- cora's i also loved when she um tried to break when cora tried to break things off with uh manuela and manuela was 
that was when they break things off, but she had to go to Scotland for Luzalana's wedding. Um, and then during that, Cora was talking to her friend. She was like, I don't miss her. I'm fine. Like, I'm so good. Manuela sh- enters the room and Cora's like, hey. And everyone's like, weren't you just saying? They're like, yeah, no, I was lying. Like, she said, I quote, missed her so much. I was lying through my teeth. <laughs> yeah, literally. No, I thought that was a really fun scene, too. I just love seeing her character because she started so poised and buttoned up and then just to see her become so unhinged she was unhinged she was i really loved it and i just i wish i could have seen them both on the cover Mm. because manuela is on the cover um and i just would like to i just i have a hard time picturing characters without like a visual from the cover so that made me sad but the cover is lovely and beautiful i just went and looked at the character art Mm, that's actually very smart we shall link any ones we find. Yes. I pre-ordered, but it is not here yet. So, oh, but you yeah. can find it on Adriana's uh, Instagram. Nice. As you do. As you do. And uh, they're hot, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I just think you should read this book. True. Because it was great. I was thinking about, oh, God. I'm going to kill myself. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> She's painting her nails. I spent this whole time... Um, slowly but surely repainting one nail because I had painted uh-huh. my nails and I messed up one of them and it was bothering me so I repainted it Um, and I had gotten through all the layers except for the top coat because I wanted to make sure it was really dry so I didn't smudge it again before I did the top coat and I just Smudged nicked it, it. <gasps> she nicked it I nicked it and I don't know what to do about it because uh, I really don't want to paint this nail for the third time that's unfortunate I'm just gonna what if I mm what mm, it's fine um <laughs> i'll figure it out i was thinking as i was reading this book because i was trying to think about like recommending it mm-hmm. um because i recommended it in like a oh, what's it called? um a queer book sack um but if somebody sees that and they just read this one i was like maybe it's one of those interconnected standalone situations yeah. when i started it um I think that I would be so lost trying to fit – because it just casually mentions like, oh, Lusalana's making out with that Scotsman. Mm -hmm. Oh, they've got to go to Scotland for Lusalana's wedding. They're definitely Mm -hmm. in love with each other. Like, I think I would be lost. It did the Joanna shoot um, Fifth Avenue Rebels where if you don't – if you just read book two and you don't read book one, they're at this random house party and shit's going down and people are like – getting ruined and stuff and you're like what is happening why do i care about these characters and you're like oh they were the couple in book one um i was definitely confused when i read that book for the first because i read book two first and i was like what and then i understood i went back and read the summary for book one and i definitely think you should read these in order um for that reason i also just think i liked seeing manuela because she was different Mm-hmm. than I assumed her character would be in this one from what mm-hmm. I had read in book one. So it was nice to kind of see her layers um, be revealed. I think I, I think it would be easy to get lost. Ah, well, not lost. There would just be random scenes where you're like, what is going on? Well, because could you imagine reading book three without reading this one and like getting the Aurora development that we got? That's true. Like And like the relationship, like her d- relationship development like i think that would be very hard because you didn't um I, I think we maybe met cora in book one we did really briefly yeah i think um but you you didn't really see the two of them together because they met for the first time at the beginning of this book so i guess that's not quite there but yeah i mean if you try to read book three without reading this one good luck charlie i mean we don't know maybe well i just know like the things that you learned i think just make it so much more exciting to see where they end up Mm. like i mean you could probably do it but i just think i loved seeing um aurora (laughs) like you mentioned earlier when she was just living it up (laughs) having the time of her life (laughs) oh just talking about uh speculums and eating talking about speculums and eating juicy roast love that for her Mm -hmm. truly the definition yeah, of her best life. 
because her hero is um, the half brother of Evan, who is now the actual Earl of Stanick. Because I had like previous, I like forgot that Evan was the Earl, and then his half brother was revealed, and then they like had the coup. Oh, I sure did forget all of this. Uh huh. And so then the brother it. was given the earldom because he was actually legitimate. And so then Evan stepped down from that, went on to be the brewer, alcohol person with Luzalana. The alcohol and then, <laughs> and then dream job. <laughs> and then whatever this guy's name is that I'm blanking on. Apollo. I mean, he's tech. Apollo. Yeah, hot name. <laughs> Apollo, Earl of Stanick. Um, he is now re- reluctantly, um, in the nobility. And just infatuated with Aurora. And she wants nothing to do with him. Or does mm. she? Or does she? And he's just like, please? There was, there was a really cute interaction between him and Cora because he buys out her shares in the railroad, which I thought was nice and kind of a good workaround. Um, so then she doesn't have to deal with the stupid men anymore because <laughs> it's not fulfilling her. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, and so I also um, would like to not deal with the stupid man. <laughs> I just liked how he he just felt so like desperate for Aurora to just like like him and he was so confused <laughs> why she didn't. And then also when Cora was like, Yeah, you need like I kinda wanna shoot you. <laughs> like you're annoying. Yeah. I was she like, said, Yeah, I don't like you. Uh I just think these two books were just so interesting and um, unique within the current genre. And again, the audiobooks were great. The same narrator narrates um, the two books. Oh my she god! Also, in- Ooh. also, can we talk about her pink room? <gasps> yes. she's living my dream life. Yes, she a is. A wall of windows that look out over the Eiffel Tower and a room done entirely mm. in shades of pink. Mm. She was like, do you like it? And Manuela was like, that chair is pink damask. And I was like, she's me. I want it. I I, mm-hmm. I, I want it. <laughs> I want and I love- it that way. <laughs> I want it all. Dude, wow, I love Brooklyn nice. Nine-Nine. <laughs> I love that scene. Um... I just loved how I just did not expect that. And then her room is just so frilly and pink. And, ugh. Yeah. Mm. And it did the trope of, like, no one's ever been in my private rooms before. Mm. Sexy. Mm. I guess we haven't talked even about the sex yet. Oh. I do think. How unlike us. <laughs> We're just still on merg creatures. I don't know what that is for us but um i did think with the because she wanted to be ruined like she wanted to have like one night of pleasure like at the beginning of the book and whenever there's that um setup i do always i always am a little bit disappointed when they don't bang it out right away um she was talking about art (laughs) rather than (laughs) climaxing which was unfortunate for her but Mm -hmm. I think, I think it, it worked was for the overall for plot you more than it was yeah. for her. She was having a great time talking about art. That is true. But then she was like, shit, I didn't get ravished. And now we're out of time. <laughs> my pumpkin is here. And by my pumpkin, I mean Aurora. <laughs> hey, another princess, princess name. We got oh, there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um... Well, but I do also think she kind of dodged that by like the, it worked. the bargain itself wasn't. I mean, obviously, in it the wasn't. The, book, she's yeah, the it. yeah, I wasn't frustrated about the bargain at all. No, but yeah, I think she dodged it with it, just like showing the. Well, I think you, scene. like early on. The, I I wasn't expecting anything to happen early on. Mm-hmm. Because I, I was waiting for the bargain. And the bargain was very specifically, like, show me around, not mm-hmm. we're going to have an affair. Mm-hmm. So I, I I think it would have been different if either the bargain had played out differently or if, like, the, the summary of the book 
had yeah. played it up more and said like she's getting ravished all over Paris or something like mm-hmm. but I, I think it was pretty straightforward about how sexy it was gonna be I feel like it also was it was pretty steamy it was like on brand for I think her contemporaries are a little bit steamier yeah I think they um, have more scenes I think this one had a lot of like it was like really hot and then there were a lot of like fade to black moments yeah um, like the face sitting was talked about like Manuela was like I'm gonna do this to you and then it proceeded to happen like summarized and then you got them after um so I mean, like I feel like if she talked about it in such detail, she did though, but it still basically got it I just I wanted to see that from her because a lot of the sex scenes were um I felt like Cora doing things to Manuela. So I wanted to see that scene from Manuela's POV, which we got part of it. I wanted the full thing. Mm. Um, but again, not a critique. It was just like, oh, rough for me. Mm. Still good they for them. lighter steam, but Adriana Herrera mm-hmm. writes dirty talk like nobody's business. She really does. That's, that's like the one thing I know to expect every time. Mm-hmm. She's like, these people are going to say just some filthy things to each other. Kept calling her Princessa and uh the pet names were good in this one <sighs> yeah mhm 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 i just think that i don't know i really have no more thoughts it's like where are you going i know that? this is a beat drop but the beat <laughs> fell over got sicker <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm distracted by that. No. Okay, I thought I smudged it for a third time. I didn't. That would have really, I think, been the I, end instead of you. Of, it might, I actually would have just exploded. You would be like, what are those chunks on Caroline's computer's camera? Ew. Wow. <laughs> I would have gotten an eyeful. Visceral, no? <laughs> Visceral. Ugh. As opposed to Yonick. Yonick. What a Yonick. Yonick. So close to Yonick. Yonick. Um, How many times can I say Yonick? It was a banger. I really have nothing compelling about this to say. I, it was just a good time. I know. I feel like this is a very... This feels like the, our um, Married by Morning episode. Like... <sighs> truly nothing <laughs> to say I, I i got no notes except for i was no confused notes. by her logic but whatever live your life queen yeah i i would have not married this slimy dude but no that's not my business i'm still just stuck on her jumping on his back i mean that was iconic keeping him her. alive like Especially Bloody considering nose. she showed up having been just, like, truly just sitting in a room being sad. Mm-hmm. Which means she is, like, she is, her clothes are a mess. I have to imagine her hair isn't brushed. Like, she is the feminine equivalent of a five o'clock shadow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, because she, you the drama, marry him. the drama of her telling her um, servants to not show her any um correspondence and then the wedding invitation being in the correspondence that she wasn't oh my God, the shown drama. and then she opens also it and she's like oh my like, god not letting anyone like change the sheets uh-huh. she was so oh my Sleeping god she was like i can't shower down. because i want her like her scent on me i don't want oh my gosh it her i think that's also why i just loved this scene so much or like the ending because I just felt her pain and like her desperation so much through that scene. The drama. Yeah. It was it was great. And I felt it even more the second time. Um reading it through. But yeah. Her whole I I, I think I like rewound last night and listened to that again because I was just like, oh, that hit. Um when she was just like screaming at them. <laughs> Because everyone in her household was like, she is being very not nice right now. <laughs> like, we are scared. <laughs> like, what is 
<laughs> what no is way. going on? Ugh. Well, because then she had the older – she had her – was it her aunt? Uh-huh. Um, who was a voice of reason and also a queen. I loved her. Um, yeah, it was just – there was just so much heart and emotion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That 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 about does it. And I yeah. really just want to go listen to On the Hustle again. Oh, that is a great book. I know. That is another man who is so down bad. Mm-hmm. All of these men and Cora, mm-hmm. all down bad. Yeah. Mm. She reached a new down bad level. I think <laughs> – to to the like level of you and in daring in the duke i mean once you sleep in your lover's ball gown yeah because it was the last thing they touched or i can't uh-huh. was it her ball gown or was it just her it was just ball her, gown her i think it was just her cora's ball gown and just like her sheets that had touched her and the skin okay, less that had touched less dramatic her. than sleeping in manuela's ball gown but nevertheless yeah the drama. or she like had her or like uh, she had uh, who knows i don't yeah i don't know this juncture <laughs> it's it's that like i'm never washing this hand again energy, yeah but it was everything for your whole body <laughs> mm-hmm. and you just felt it like you felt her desperation oh my God. she was so sad it's right where you left me that's it mm. that's the song mm-hmm mm-hmm I just love when characters grovel appropriately. Okay, yeah, because then didn't she – what was her, like, big grand gesture at the end? Did she, hit, like, she do bought something? She the building. Like, yeah, the building. And mm-hmm. Well, and her paintings to mm-hmm. hang in said building for yep. the women's – collective thing yeah yeah. oh gosh well we need to end this because we have rambled and i mean mostly about mostly about jonah howard king if we're being honest yeah maybe if you're listening to this and it's significantly shorter than we're saying and there's not a lot of info about prince eric (laughs) just know that hannah cut so much of just us thirsting over prince herrick and weeping over hallie bailey no i think i have to legit cut 20 minutes because we talked for like 45 minutes about it and I mean, qu- cutting 20 minutes still means the that there's needs 20 to hear it. <laughs> i think our Everyone first 20 minutes was solid that movie. and then i think i think the last 20 minutes was just chaotically horny and like it was it was confused in in a yonic way i mean <laughs> <laughs> who are we if not lusty and addled uh lusty and addled in a yonic way i it's don't not think you're using had... yonic correctly <laughs> i'm not but i don't know it just doesn't sound like a word it doesn't sound correct it's not the Ted Lasso way. It's not the Lasso way. It's the Yonic way. <laughs> it it just I don't want it to be that. But that's Big Manuela energy. I think there are just some words that don't seem like nouns or adjectives or verbs when they're like they sound like a different part of a speech than they are. And to me, that's Yonic. <laughs> if you say so. I mean, I I really don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I don't either. Ebees, what ebees? Yeah. Not a clue. Well, okay. if you're listening to this, we're wrapping this up. I've decided. <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> if you're listening to this, Caroline's currently in New York. Woo! Which is exciting. Um, so uh, we should, I believe, already have sent out a newsletter. Yes. On by the time this the... goes up, um, with some. The 13th, I think. Oh. Anyway, in said newsletter, there is also something fun in that newsletter. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because it's Substack, you should be able to go, but even if you're not subscribed, if you, Mm -hmm. like, go subscribe, you should be able to go check it out. Um, But it is related to the book we talked about today. (laughs) 
So, yeah. Check that out. I don't, we, don't, we haven't thought about the terms or anything of that yet. No, so all that information you'll stay in, in the there. newsletter. You can go yeah. subscribe and see what's exactly. going on there. Um, and then, like we said previously, our Texas Destiny episode is on the 16th, um, not the Flame and the Flower. That was moved to August 11th. Yes. Um, we swapped we're going to skip TBR Tuesday on the 13th just because Caroline is just getting back from her trip and we don't need that <laughs> in our life at that moment. We're going to do um, one on the 20th um, yep. with uh, our like so. favorite queer historical wrecks. Um, and then we're also doing an episode on the 23rd um, on the country lives of the what the what lives of con- secret, secret lives. The secret lives. I was of like the country gentlemen. lives of country gentlemen. I'm like that sounds a little too yeehaw. The secret They're lives of cunt. country gentlemen. Three. <laughs> Can I make the episode title the country lives? <laughs> the secret lives of country gentlemen. That is hilarious. That is too funny. Um, wow. Yes. <laughs> Bookmarked fun. for later. <laughs> Truthfully, um, the so yeah, secret lives of serving on- country gentlemen. Uh, so yeah, so keep your ears peeled for all of that. Mm. Yeah. And then is our episode, I think the episode on the 30th is Dreaming of You. So that's exciting for us. I don't know. I would have to go back and look, but that's exciting for me if it is because I haven't right? read some Lisa Claypus in a long time. I know. I definitely uh... need to go back and reread The Ravenels. Mm. The things I, I have heard on. about Derek Craven, um, I've got a Craven for more Craven. That's another related to whatever that episode title is going to be. It's going to have to be a play on I've got a Craven. So we're just yeah, what, ending up with episode titles right and left. And, hmm, why am I going to like Taco Jones or Taco Bell? What? I know. I'm. What's their slogan? I, I don't know. Oh, that's not correct at all. I'm like, there's like a, there's like a, no, but there is, is it the, there's a cereal maybe? The like chocolate one? Crave. This is a lot. However, tell me why I Googled cereal slogan Crave and one of the articles comes up is, uh, it's on mrbreakfast.com, 20 most memorable cereal slogans. And then it's got like the little preview of the article just like on the Google page, you know? Number 20 is the cereal shot from guns. What? What? cereal. Cracker Jacks? It, it, no, it's it's puffed rice. Quaker puffed rice. puffed rice. So Quakers. Once again, the Quakers are haunting God us. God damn. Okay, the cereal is actually made using a process that resembles shooting rice from a gun. In 1904, Quaker introduced the cereal to the mass public by shooting puffed rice from cannons at the World's Fair. <gasps> it brings us back to An Island Princess Starts a Scandal. 1904 at the World's Fair. God damn it, that means I can't cut this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Because at the... How how weird. In 1913, an astute ad man decided to promote the cereal by exploiting how it's made and this famous yet mostly forgotten slogan was invented. I see why it was mostly forgotten. <laughs> and it's every... So that was at the 1904... So at the World's Fair that follows... Because this one's 1899, right? I think so, yeah. So 1899, you have the Eiffel Tower and Luzalana marrying this man and Manuela <laughs> living out her sapphic dreams. And meanwhile, and there's some the very guy. next wor- No, it's at the next World's Fair. Yeah, some in random 1904, guy. you have Quaker, Quaker Oats shooting puffed rice from cannons. That's just five years away. Where we're going, we don't need roads. We only wow. need puffed rice cannons. <laughs> That's um, not where I expected this outro to go. <laughs> but go it went. But go it went. But go, but go it went. But go it goed. But go it goed. Wake me Bye up before you go go. Mm. <laughs> Wake me up. Wake me up. I watched a video where that guy, that screamo guy, was only in, um, so that was like the Evanescence song. That guy 
was only in that single. Like, he's not part of the band. It's a, like, female-led band. And due to sexism and misogyny, the record label did not think that um, a female band would um, take any, like, hit any traction or whatever. So they added some random guy, added some screamo. The rap was all them. And um, he was never featured on another one of their songs. And they were not happy about it. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. He's, like, randomly in the music video. He was from another band. The more you know. The patriarchy ruins everything. Mm-hmm. I will say it is an iconic, wake me up. Yeah, it, except wake for that, up. though. They might have, the patriarchy might have been right <laughs> about that song. <laughs> The patriarchy <laughs> might have been right about that one evidence and song. And then nowhere else ever. The patriarchy might have made one singular point. <laughs> and yeah, they didn't even deserve that one point. They kind of they got away with that one. Yeah. But I mean, I think that's what we have to leave you with. Mhm. Wake me up inside. Save me. That's honestly the vibes of this book. Yeah, low key. <laughs> no screamo. Yeah, less screamo, but definitely it's the um the acoustic. <laughs> what's the what's there's misogyny misandry? Is that for men? Mhm. It's the misandry version without the screamo. <laughs> so, yeah, we yeah. We've devolved in. Actually, I can't even say we've devolved into chaos because we started with chaos. Um, Pure, unadulterated chaos. You're welcome. Have a good you're evening s- or day. I don't know when you're listening to this. Hopefully, we're haunting your dreams. Oh, no, not that. I don't want to haunt <laughs> people. <laughs> no. I feel like this was a haunting episode. I this mean, is it- so chaotic. <laughs> I I'm it may haunted. be haunting if by some weird twist of fate Jonah Howard <laughs> King ever listens to it. Oh god. It would be haunting restraining for him. order. Yeah. That poor that poor man showing up to the internet. <laughs> Not showing up to the internet. I just imagine him getting on TikTok and seeing like uh-huh. thirst trap after thirst trap uh-huh. of like him on the bow of the ship where his mm. ass absolutely carried that shot. <laughs> And he's like, why? Why are you guys doing this? That would be so weird to go to being relatively unknown to just everyone. I mean, did you see the interview where they asked him? They were like, are you prepared to be like the next heartthrob? And Hallie was Mm -hmm. like, I tried to tell him. And he's like, oh, I didn't think. I don't know. I was like, boy. What a little modest The thirst mouse. you have inspired. I know I love him. He's he's so baby girl. It's fine. Everything is fine. Just those dimples. Just one's there and then one we is cannot, like a sneak attack. We cannot continue. <laughs> we cannot keep doing this. Speak now. Speak violence. Speak <laughs> no more. <laughs> Call me Ariel because I have no more words. <laughs>